knee slice, otherwise known as the best slice. This is my favorite pass. I've utilized this pass in virtually every tournament and high profile match that I've won. It is one of, if not the most, versatile and effective passes in all of BJJ. It's your one-stop shop for improving your nogi passing game. While not literally always available, the fact that all I need to do is see an underhook in order to bust it out makes it a fantastic addition to any passing system. It's fast, it's aggressive, and it's capable of both slowing the pace down and genuinely controlling your opponent before finishing the pass, making regarding exceptionally difficult and unlikely to work. Today we're going to be covering the knee slice, everything you need to know about it from entries to finishes to failure models. This is the last video you'll ever need to watch on the knee slice. Before we go on to talk about specific entries and finishes, I want to address some of the conceptual aspects of when to go for a knee slice and how to initially enter. These are your rules to knee slicing. First, you need to understand that the knee slice cannot be the only move in your arsenal. The knee slice is very effective and you can hit it from a lot of places, but you have to have systems around what to do when the underhook is just not available. Because if the underhook is not available, there is no knee slice and we have to do something else. That disclaimer out of the way, here's the first thing we want to focus on when we're doing our knee slices. I don't want to be looking for knee slices when their hips are on the same side as the angle I want to cut to. The knee shield will always be in the way and there is just too much distance between me and the underhook to guarantee I can keep it. While I can certainly pull off a knee slice from here if I happen to catch my opponent posting on my shoulder by popping the arm across before diving for the underhook, the lack of other passing opportunities, and the fact that I will still have to beat the knee shield means I do not favor this position. I would rather knee slice when their hips are in the middle or on the opposite side. My rule is always try to cut across when you can, and the wider their legs are before you cut, the easier the knee slice will be. Wider legs provide an easier target for me to knee slice through, reducing the chance of them blocking your leg from shooting towards the pocket of their hips or their shoulders. The knee shield also has to come all the way back across in order to interfere. Both of these factors make the odds of landing successful knee slice go way up. Second, anytime they are grabbing your leg or ankle, an underhook is available. There is just an unforgivable gap in your opponent's elbow that leaves ankle grips vulnerable to getting diving knee sliced. One of my favorite things to do is to use this to bait a lot of aggressive entries by stepping in and forcing my opponent to automatically grab my leg, and then I knee slice them into oblivion before they catch their bearings and begin to pressure. Look for opportunities to punish your opponent for grabbing your leg. The underhook being available means we should be thinking about knee slicing them. Third, distance between my chest and their shoulder is what allows them to re-pummel me. This means that I want to close the distance off as much as possible as quickly as possible. Keeping sticky pressure on the underhook arm and keeping my body position closer to them by either pressuring in or maintaining control of their head are a few ways that we can maximize the potential of our knee slice. Pressuring and closing the space prevent them from easily digging their arm back to the inside and if they can't re-pummel you then they can't really get away. How quickly you can get your chest down can make all of the difference in the world. Fourth, there are only really two different entries mechanically. One involves catching my underhook first before pressuring my knee into quarter guard. The other involves shooting my knee first while diving for a set underhook, corkscrewing my body to slap the mat on the opposite side of their head. When to go for what involves how much space there is between you and the underhook. If your upper body is close to it, grab it first before going. If it's further away, dive for it. To perform a diving knee slice, either drop your knee into the pocket of their hip like a lead weight or shoot your knee towards their armpit like a cannonball. It is important that your knee is the first thing that moves in situations like this. While we're falling, reach for the underhook, pressuring yourself down and them up the moment you make contact. At the same time, corkscrew your upper body in order to get your chest down to the underhook as fast as possible and eliminate space, posting your offhand on the other side of their head. If you're forced to two-on-one the underhook to prevent the re-pummel, it's okay to post your head on the mat for initial balance. 5. Be patient and don't cut out. You want to think about knee slices as just getting our knee firmly planted on the mat as close to our opponent's body as possible. We can then take our time to pressure our way to the finish. I never want to try to enter or finish a pass by shooting my knee out and away from my opponent. This is wrong. At all times, in all knee slice entries and variations, I want my knee to be as close to my opponent's body as possible preferably right underneath me so that way I can vary the amount of weight that goes on my hips and I can change my angle. This prevents him from regarding as the majority of the weight is now situated firmly on my knee, making it an immovable object. And with my hips underneath me, I am in very little danger of getting rolled, especially with the fact that I can use the underhook to control what side he can face. I can now safely and securely, without making any excess space, finish my pass.
Now that we've got the general rules out of the way, we're going to start exploring the specific entries and how to perform them. Starting with the seated guard entries and then moving on to entries that involve your opponent already being on his back. We'll discuss finishing the knee slice in detail in its own specific section. First up, we're going to be talking about the exception to most rules, the step on the foot knee slice. I go for this pass specifically when my opponent is playing loosely with his feet positioning, leaving one leg more forward and exposed than the other. I need to be able to see an underhook at the same time in order to go for this pass. Again, if there is no underhook available, I will not be looking for knee slices. The pass itself involves me taking my left leg and briefly stepping on top of Bird's league foot, preventing him from retracting his legs or kicking his other leg up and over to defend. Without hesitation, shoot your knee forwards towards the pocket of his hips or towards the pocket of his shoulder. At the same time, begin leaning forward and digging your underhook on the right side, looking to maintain as much pressure on the underhook as possible. Normally, I would pause after getting my knee on the mat and maintaining my underhook, securing my position further before going on to finish the pass. This pass is the exception. Because we prevented our opponent from retracting his legs by stepping on it, we are uniquely situated to blast through in one motion. Make sure that after you pass your opponent's legs, you really focus on buckling down and pinning your opponent to the mat, using that underhook to your benefit. This pass, I'm looking to use my left arm to snap my opponent's head down, providing me with a cross pressure that makes quickly digging the underhook on my right side significantly easier. Once I have the underhook, I want to maintain as much inward pressure on the top of his head as possible, burying it into my solar plexus so that way he can't repummel me. Now I want to start to walk my knees and hips towards the pocket of his hips, stutter stepping along the way as required for balance. Once we hit the mat, I no longer need to maintain my connection to his head as my opponent has nowhere to go in order to make space for repummeling me. Proceed by utilizing our standard knee slice finishing system. This is my favorite of the seated guard knee slices. This time we're using our underhook arm to snap his head into a left arm guillotine. I'm saying guillotine, but what I really want to focus on is holding the chin strap, as this is the ideal way to prevent your opponent from rotating or making space. The guillotine gives me cross pressure that allows me to dig the underhook on the right side. Once I have the underhook, I stutter step my knee towards the pocket of his hip in the mat, only letting go of the guillotine once we are both down. The guillotine can be utilized to finish the pass, but the compromise to your balance means I will very often let go of the guillotine in order to favor our standard knee slice finishing system. This time I'm looking to instep my opponent and bait him into either grabbing my leg so I can knee slice him, or I will pressure him onto his back to utilize headquarters. To guarantee an instep, I first begin to walk around my opponent's legs to my left side, forcing him to plant at least one foot to follow me. As soon as he plants one foot, I skim the mat into a deep instep with my right leg. I want my shin to directly touch the back of Bird's knees, opening it up slightly, that way it is more likely I will have an underhook available. While I step in, I make sure that my right hand is positioning down near my knee, so that I can make sure I always get the underhook when my opponent goes to grab my leg. My left hand goes to the back of Bird's head to prevent him from flinging himself backwards to make space for the re-pummel. Now I can stutter step my knee to the mat and finish the pass. If you find yourself in the unenviable position of having instepped your opponent where he grabs your legs and you did not catch the underhook, quickly pick up your opponent's bottom leg by the knee, changing the angle of his hips and allowing you to step your right foot deeper into the pocket of his leg, opening both his leg and his elbow allowing you to quickly re-pummel the underhook before you completing the knee slice. If your opponent caught a shin hook while you were instepping and you managed to catch your underhook, make sure you lean your body across his even more to prevent him from bumping you are making space to repummel his arms. Maintain all of the weight in your knee while initiating your knee slice. At some point, I will begin to push my shin back into their shin hook in order to bait them into pushing back. When they do, I will simply allow my foot to go limp and their foot will slide right off. If you didn't get the underhook and your opponent has a shin hook, you need to drive your knee down into the pocket of his hip on the same side, focusing on balancing. Once you get down, take your left foot and reach it underneath your opponent's top side leg, looking to push the shin hook itself off. After pushing the shin hook, rotate your right leg out into his leg to prevent him from simply re-grabbing it. If the underhook is available, go ahead and dive on it to finish the knee slice. Otherwise, we will simply play headquarters. De La Hiva is a fantastic position to both practice knee slicing and to bust it out on an unsuspecting opponent. First, I focus on killing the De La Hiva hook either by instepping more cleanly and preventing the hook from coming in to begin with, or by utilizing the palm of my hand to level change and pressure the hook itself off. I make sure the top sided leg of my opponent goes underneath my hips, as allowing that leg free reign will limit your knee slicing opportunities and risk you getting swept or off balanced. To begin my knee slice, I make sure that my right hand is blocking my opponent's bottom leg to prevent the knee shield from following me 
and to allow me to break my opponent's grip on my leg, although this is not always necessary. What I don't want to do is reach for my underhook first, as it is too far away and my opponent will simply leg lasso me or abandon the position entirely, preventing me from getting my knee slice. Instead, I begin by shooting my knee forward like a cannonball towards the pocket of my opponent's shoulder or his hip. Moments after I begin my shot, I can now rotate my wrist so that my forearm is blocking his leg instead of my hand. I want to angle my arm in a way that it will naturally slide up into the underhook. As I continue to fall, I will now reach up for the underhook, making sure my hook is sticky and has lots of pressure the moment I make contact. I will be either pulling myself down to my opponent at an accelerated rate, or I will pull him up to myself. Which one happens depends on our relative size. Either way, our goal is to close the distance as quickly as possible. While I am diving, my torso will corkscrew to my right and my left hand will be looking to catch myself somewhere on the opposite side of my opponent's head. Never use an underhook arm to catch yourself. In the worst case scenario where you have to utilize two hands to maintain your underhook, I will plant my head on the mat instead. After all, what is a concussion compared to victory? Victory is eternal. Once we've gotten all the way down, chest to shoulder, and our knee is firmly planted on the mat, I will then utilize our standard knee slice finish to secure the pass. When I am in standing butterfly guard, it is important that I am pressuring at least one of my knees into his shin in order to establish some control of the position. If my opponent grabs my leg, I have a knee slice opportunity available when my opponent goes to utilize that grip to transition to single X. If he doesn't grab my leg at all, I can punish him by simply rotating my knee to the inside and dropping my way into headquarters. What I will not allow my opponent to do is to grab both of my ankles. If he grabs both, I will compensate by pinching both legs in to maintain my position while I reach down with one side and peel his hand off. Pressure is key here. When my opponent goes to strip through to single X, I want to make sure that it is slow as possible and that I am changing the angle that he is stripping through by pressuring that shin. That way, when he goes to strip through, he has to come even further back in order to establish single X and trap me in the position. This buys me more time to establish my knee slice. Once their leg clears my knee, I will drop my knee across the mat into the pocket of their hip while corkscrewing my upper body to grab the underhook. It's important on this one that you do not hesitate, as hesitation will find you in either single X or a reap, both of which can be potentially game ending. This is an attack of opportunity with a narrow window. After we get on the mat, I simply kick both of my opponent's legs off and rotate my leg to establish side control. Headquarters as a position offers many knee slice options depending on where and when you grab which underhook. To break this down as simply as possible, anytime I grab the bottom side underhook, I can shoot my knee across and perform a traditional knee slice. If I grip the top side underhook, I can knee slice over the top of my opponent's hips like we did from Butterfly Guard. Virtually anytime you can see an underhook opportunity on your opponent, you can initiate a diving knee slice. Sometimes it's while your opponent is kicking up and over to regard, sometimes your opponent will randomly reach for your leg. Others, they just happen to leave a bend in their arm that allows you to secure the underhook. These are opportunities you should not overlook. The diving knee slice is worth putting significant effort into because these opportunities present themselves all across the board and having a super high percentage pass that you can just bust out frequently will lead to your passing your opponent's guard with a significantly higher percentage of success. With the exception of over-the-top knee slices, we will be finishing our knee slices virtually the same way regardless of which entry we caught. First, I make sure that I am very secure in my positioning when I get down into my knee slice. My arm is posted for stability, my weight is situated on my knee, I am pressuring my underhook, and my left foot is placing itself in various positions for balance. The first thing I'm going to do is called a check kick. I use the word kick here, but I really mean an aggressive push. I use my left leg to push my opponent's legs off. To do this, I always push on the inside of the top leg at an upward angle to open the legs. Then I quickly push the bottom leg out of the way to clear them. Sometimes you land in an knee slice and find your opponent has you in quarter guard, but they haven't really started to squeeze your leg yet. Your check kick might just clear the guard entirely. That's why it's important to make the first one count because if your check kick fails, all you've done is remind them that they need to squeeze their legs. If your check kick fails, it's no big deal. We simply begin to add pressure elsewhere to increase the likelihood of success. I always escalate my pressure and positioning based off of what my opponents make me do. The weaker my opponent, the less steps of adding pressure I have to go through. Step one is always going to be my check kick. Step two is to club my opponent's head, making sure I turn my arm at a downward angle down his back to maximize the effectiveness of my shoulder pressure. 
I then proceed to check kick him again. If I have added the maximum amount of shoulder pressure and I still can't escape, I'll then place my head against the groove of my opponent's neck on the left side, turning my head away in order to better utilize bridging mechanics to punish my opponent. I then remove the weight from my right hand and drive my neck into my opponent, straightening his spine. Once his spine is straight, I place my right hand on the mat and prevent my opponent from turning or sliding from this point forward. Now he will eat all that pressure in his neck. I drive with everything I've got, seeking to slip underneath my opponent's neck. When I feel like I have added the maximum amount of pressure that I can with just my upper body mechanics, I'll try to check kick again. If this check kick fails, I'll now utilize my lower body mechanics to increase the pressure. I make sure my knee is lined up with my opponent's hips, maintaining contact at all times. I lift my trapped foot to my butt in order to maximize the amount of downward pressure that is being generated by my knee. This will prevent me from putting myself in half guard. I begin to sprawl my knee backwards, following the contour of my opponent's hips as far as I feel comfortable. In order to generate backwards pressure without moving my entire body, I pressure into my underhook and occasionally I will grab an overhook with my left arm. It's important that I maintain connection to his hips with my knee at all times. If my knee disconnects, I bring it back to the starting position and I try again. I also only go as far back as I feel comfortable before attempting to check kick my opponent's legs again. If the combination of my neck pressure and my hip pressure don't open him up, the position is now turned into a grind where I attempt to pressure and wear down my opponent, check kicking him periodically. At no point in my knee slice finishes do I ever give up space and allow my opponent to re-enter the match. Every pass that I get from here should be extremely secure. Your knee slice can fail in a variety of ways, especially if you are new to the mechanics. However, there are certain failure models that are common and consistent across all skill levels, and because they are consistent, we can have routes in place to correct the move or punish our opponents. If you notice that you're going to miss the underhook after you've committed to your knee slice, you can take your failure of an underhook arm and place it on the mats by your opponent's hips. You can then utilize the momentum of your knee slice to rotate around your opponent's head, placing your right knee behind your opponent's shoulder to prevent him from turning back into you. If your opponent turns into you anyways, simply sprawl out on top of him to secure the position. If your opponent turns away from you, pull yourself down towards his hips and begin to chase his back. Either way, we have established some kind of dominant position off of missing our underhook on the knee slice. The most common way people fail to knee slice someone, outside of losing the underhook arm, is getting knee shielded. This can be a motherfucker to deal with if you don't know what to do. The knee shield comes in two forms, annoyingly shallow and annoyingly deep. A shallow knee slice isn't that big of a deal. Simply two on one your underhook to prevent your opponent from re-pummeling and start to pressure. Use the underhook pressure to prevent your opponent from pushing you away with the knee shield. Try to pull yourself towards your opponent until you are directly over top of them and no longer need to use two hands to hold the position. Now you can place your left hand on the mat and begin to sprawl your right hip inwards through the knee shield towards my opponent's hips. A shallow knee shield should come right off. Now, a deep knee shield takes a little finesse to clear. I've found that the best way to clear the deep knee shield is to pressure my way in towards my opponent until I can fall on top of my left hip, angled towards my opponent's head. I fall just far enough that my opponent's knee shield slips off, recovering the position by turning my knee back towards the mat and re-entering the knee slice. If the knee shield is absolutely just jammed into your hip and it won't come off, I'll pull myself in close enough to grab a chin strap guillotine with my left arm. I'll first attempt to pressure my way through the knee slice using the added grip. If that doesn't work, I'll then attempt to roll over top of the knee shield before catching myself with the chin strap and re positioning myself into either a knee on belly or a knee slice position. If I don't feel comfortable resetting, I will follow through on the front roll, making sure that I maintain both the underhook and the chin strap. When I'm on my back, I will then bridge my way up into side control, and it is important that you actually do a bridge and don't just turn into them. If you turn into them, they will get up at the same time as you, and then you will just be in a front headlock position. Bridging, however, keeps them down flat. Should you land in a deep knee shield with no underhook, the first thing you do is start to lean into said knee shield to prevent yourself from getting pushed away. I have two goals right now. Option one is to wait for my opponent to post his arm on me somewhere to prevent me from overpressuring him, in which case I will use my right arm to pop his grip across into my underhook. Then I will deal with the deep knee shield. Or I will pressure my way in until I feel like I have some leeway to play with. I will then attempt to either dive into a guillotine with my left arm, freeing my right arm up to dig for the underhook and completing the pass, or I will place my right hand on the mat by my opponent's body and attempt to hop around my opponent's head like we did earlier. Worst case scenario, we abandon the attempt entirely and begin to pass our opponent some other way. 
If you found yourself having fully committed to the knee slice, but you completely missed the underhook and weren't quick enough to walk around your opponent, you are in deep shit. Luckily, we have a few recovery options available to us. First, I will attempt to keep my opponent down on his back by placing my left hand on the side of his face and pressuring down. While I'm doing this, I will take my right hand and insert a shallow wizard, not a deep wizard. A deep wizard will connect me to my opponent's hips in a way that might get me rolled. I will utilize this shallow wizard to pull my opponent's arm up and off of my hips, and this will create more space for me to play with. Once I've made enough space, I'll look to take my left arm and insert it underneath my opponent's arm as a wedge. This makes it easy for me to circle my right arm back through to the underhook, re-establishing my knee slice position. If my opponent is hell-bent on getting up, I will look to windshield wiper over my opponent's legs to the top saddle position. This is a versatile passing position that takes time and effort to really nail down, as you are required to balance while maintaining your own offense. First, let's talk about holding this position. I like to place my left knee behind my opponent's knee caps in a way that it turns my opponent's hips away from me and provides resistance for when he tries to turn back. Second, my right hand wants to brace off of my opponent's neck, pressuring him away from me. My overall goal in this position is to not let my opponent get out from underneath me and to redig my underhook on the right side. If I manage to do that, all I need to do is step back over my opponent's legs and re-enter my knee slice position. To make this easier, after bracing my hand on my opponent's neck, I then push my hips down in a way to make space for me to pummel. If I can't dig my underhook back, because my opponent is maintaining too tight of a connection to my hip, I will instead look to either dig the left underhook or walk my trapped foot out. If I can dig my left underhook, all I need to do is corkscrew my upper body so we are chest to chest before utilizing my left leg to pressure my right leg free. Otherwise, I'm going to be working to free my left foot by first pushing down on top of my opponent's bottom leg, working to wiggle my foot free until I can windshield wiper it on top of my opponent's top leg. Once I've done this, I am essentially free, and I only need to follow my opponent's hip line down to side control. Congratulations, my friend! You have a high degree of functional knowledge on the knee slice. Go out there and begin ruining days with this fantastic pass. If you want to learn more about nogi passing in general, feel free to check out our instructionals on BJJ Fanatics. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We have a Patreon account if you guys want to support the cause. Otherwise, we hope everyone has a fantastic day and remembers to eat their Panda Express. Bye, have a great time!